Hello everyone and welcome back. I've had a few requests to do a couple more molar endos, so here you go. Pretty straightforward one here, decay on number 15 to the pulp. She's starting to have some pain. Looks like it's pretty straightforward, nice conical shape to the roots, nothing too curvy, so let's go through this one. I was looking at kind of, is there an MB2 on this tooth or not? You can clearly see there's one on the comb beam on the first molar, but as we go down, you'll notice that there is a connection between the palatal and the MB root, almost like a C shape. We see this a lot on second molars, and sometimes there is an MB2, sometimes there isn't. So I'm going to go through the process of how I trough through this. That the different angles, you can go through them. I find that, you know, the, the coronal and the sagittal slices are kind of whatever, but the axial slice usually seems to be the best option for finding if there's an MB2. Anyway, this is what it looks like as far as the carries on the tooth, so let's get going as far as taking care of this one. So first thing I wanted to show is sometimes we do have to do a palatal uh, injection. One uh, trick here is to not invert the dam at this point, and you can actually gain access to the palatal tissue very easily without having the, gut, uh, the rubber dam in the way. So kind of a little pro tip, I left this in here to um, just to show you kind of what that looks like. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started here. Wheel bird to take the tooth out of the bite as normal. And really nothing too out of the ordinary here. Obviously that carries is the major concern. We'll get that taken care of. I am leaking like crazy out of this high speed here, that electric as well. So I just ordered 10 cartridges to replace it and get some more rings and get those cleaned up. So there will be a... Uh, a video coming up soon on how I re repair these uh, electric high speeds as well because that one was just that one was not having a good day <laughs> so cleaning out everything you can see the carries is just really deep on this one I am working with a new assistant here so I do apologize that it is a little bit dirty she's learning um, second molars are tough so assistants we all hear you out there you can see she's getting better about the rinsing it but obviously this is not going to be the greatest video of all time unfortunately and that's why this disclaimer is coming up right now <laughs> because unfortunately with carries like that yeah like I said you've all seen this before hopefully so at this point we got most of the carries out and we're going to be looking at the actual um access the the pulp tissue now and there are some pulp stones inside there so the first thing I like to do is just kind of flip it out with the endo explorer she was feeling that a little bit so we're going to do some uh, bruticane as it's affectionately called patients on halcyon so she won't remember any of this but that palatal tissue was quite inflamed there so get her nice and numb one trick here go right in after with like a 2006 or an orifice over after you do an intrapulpal injection because that is the perfect time to get it out it doesn't stay numb for very long you only have a couple minutes so you want to get that nervous nerve out of there as soon as possible and like I said I'm actually having a little bit more trouble than I thought looking at that pre-op there are some pulp stones inside there so that's why we were having a little bit more difficulty and so I'm going to use that workers burr to remove a little bit of the pulp stones they were more attached than I thought they were going to be pulp stones can either be attached where you have to drill them out or they can be kind of floating and loose and those you can usually pop out effectively while I'm in there with the workers burr you'll notice I'm starting the process already of troughing between the MB and the palatal we already knew that those were connected and so i'm going to start that process right now going in now with my 8c file like normal and at this point i'm not really too worried about the mbs mostly i just need to get this bleeding to stop so i can actually see so go back in with the 2006 like you would normally to remove that pulp tissue and at this point things are starting to kind of come together you can see where the three canals are going pretty straightforward here and once we get that rinse out, you'll see it looks much better. Now, when you have distal caries like this, I do recommend using a blockout resin because it's very difficult for them to get in there, like cure it, and it just makes it so much easier and less stressful. It's a better experience for the patient and for your assistant as well. You can see most of those pulp stones are now gone as we're rinsing out with the Triton here and looking pretty clean. So at this point, I can see where my three canals are located, and I'm gonna go ahead and dry these and start the process of trying to find our mb2 so that's what we're doing right now you can see what we're looking at zooming in so we're at about 16 times magnification now I've, I've zoomed it in a little bit more for the video but this is about what my eyes see when i'm working the camera has a little wider view i can see there's a little spot off the kind of mesial lingual of that mb canal and you can see i'm connecting from the palatal all the way you're going to sweep from your palatal canal almost in a curve all the way to the mb just to see if anything's there and it, it looks pretty solid i don't i don't really see any sign of anything there so at this point going to treat this as three canals 
go ahead and get our working length as normal, skip over that because you've seen that before, and just take this one to a 17. Don't need to do anything excessive as far as tissue removal here. It's a nice conservative skinny tooth to begin with, so the 17 is going to be more than adequate. Just need to create a path for my gutta percha to go down. So that's what the shaping looks like on that palatal tissue. You can kind of brush it, but it was pretty straightforward here. I did most of the work already with the 2006. So we're going to do our final rinse process like normal endo activator. Yellow tips here are working so well. I'm so happy we, we switched over to these with those skinny shapes. Dry everything off with paper points. And here's kind of what it looks like. So getting everything dry and it's looking good. We're, we're, we're only at three. So that's the number of canals that we're doing on this case. And like I said, three's the number. Psych! That's the wrong number! I love the internet. So, do you all see it? I'm going to use a little spot right here is where the MB2 is. And this is something you do need to take a look at. There are times where the MB2 comes off the palatal tissue. And... It can be down the palatal canal. I found it there. And when they do, they have a really steep curve on them. So yes, I did do this on purpose <laughs> as far as setting everybody up. But there's another viewer who asked about doing uh, curvy canals. And although this one looks straight on the PA, this MB2 has quite the curve to it. So a couple tricks here. Number one, you want to do a little bit more work with hand files to make sure you have a unimpeded path all the way down. And then what I'm going to do here is primarily use my rotary instruments. You know I'm a big fan of those. The rinsing in between here is going to be EDTA only. Two reasons for that. Number one, it is incredibly slippery. If you ever get EDTA on your gloves, you know exactly what I mean. It's about as slippery as glycerin, so it is a great lubricant inside the actual canal, so you don't have to worry about separating a file as much. And then the other thing to consider here is you want to soften this tooth up a little bit. You have to be careful with this. Don't over soften it. And that's why I like to do hand files dry so that I can kind of feel how the curve is and then as I'm doing my rotary files these Martisinic rotary files the heat treated ones they will follow the curve they very 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 rarely do they create their own canal and you have to be pushing pretty hard <laughs> not something you normally want to do and you can see we're just starting to drop down now with that 1704 and that's the goal we want it to be that you take those rotaries down and eventually you will get to the spot where it goes. So the trick for my, for doing curvy canals, how I take care of that, and we, we, we got, I got length off, you know, I got the working length off camera. I, I cut out all that because you guys don't need to really, you've already seen that. So the trick here is to go slowly, rotate between two different files that have different tapers and if you get stuck, go back to hand files, keep everything as small as possible here. I would never take like an F2 down this. That would be insane. That would be the, the just, you, you don't want to open things up. The, if you watch my video on outcomes, you know how I feel about the whole, oh, let's take it to a 35. <laughs> so at this point, we now have four canals. That is the proper number. And we are going to be sealing the case up using the squirt technique like normal. So if you've seen this before, um, I'll have some video or some things at the end, so stick around, but pretty much it's what you've seen a hundred times before. So I've cut most of this out, isopropyl alcohol. One thing I do like to do, because I'm going to be doing the restorative here, is I like to pop off that block out at this point, because I'm not going to be rinsing with anything that tastes bad anymore, and I need to get access to it. It's just a nice time to do it. I also do this if I'm going to have the assistants place the cavet, because then this way they don't have to worry about removing it. A lot of them are a little anxious about it. Now, at this point, I need to remove a little bit of this unsupported enamel you can see the decalcification there i left it initially because it doesn't really affect my root canal at all but it will affect the bonding process here so go in with a nice diamond coarse diamond and clean that out get everything nice and smooth this tooth will get a crown eventually um, the, the doctor's office that this patient comes from is a community clinic, and they are booked out um, a few months to get crowns. So they want me to do full contour, just nice, normal-sized you know teeth, and that way I'm not worried about it failing in the few months. Go ahead and blast everything off. Once again, new assistant is learning, but this is why we use cheap mirrors, because it just gets... I mean, it's a second molar. you got to go farther back there, and it kind of just gets hit 
to death. So uh, if you're using a blaster, which I highly, highly recommend, I've loved the results that I've been getting with mine, just buy the cheapest mirror possible to use with it and then switch back to your nice mirror. So that's what it looks like after we got everything cleaned up. We're gonna do the bonding process now. We are almost, by the time this video comes out, hopefully I will be on to the new versions of Clearfill. So I'm excited to share that with you, but we still have about a quarter bottle left as the end of August when we did this case. And I'm gonna use Build It to seal the tooth up as far as filling up that access and where the carries was. I do love this stuff. You want to use something that's very opaque because generally the dentist is gonna to wanna to drop that margin onto tooth structure and the distal of upper second molar is so difficult to see. One thing I also like to do is use the Glick here to you know, pretty much do most of my shaping for me. This is a really straightforward restorative case. So polish it off with a wheel burr as best as possible. And I like to do as much as possible with the rubber dam on because you don't have to worry about cheeks, tongues, anything like that. And you can see me going with the prep burr. I am starting to nick the rubber dam and it's starting to grab it right there. So uh, that's not a great sound and experience for the patient. So I'm gonna take the rubber dam off here in a second, but try to do as much as possible. And when the one thing I will say is it is pretty difficult to do that central groove with your barrel burr with the rubber dam on. So you may wanna take that off for the final, pretty easy to move the tongue or the cheek out of the way when you're you know working sideways like that. And then this is the final trick I was gonna show everybody. I like using these big prep burrs sideways perpendicular to the tooth when I'm polishing the distal aspect of the last tooth in the mouth it creates a very nice flat surface and that way you can move the cheek or tongue out of the way that's what the final image looks like I took it with rubber dam on and here's what a final x-ray looks like so four canals looks nice and conservative send them back anyway thank you guys so much for watching I thought this would be a fun one to share with everybody you don't often see those mb2s coming off the palatal tissue but they do exist if you're looking at a case and are suspicious that there might be some extra anatomy or there might be an MB2 there, always look off the palatal and you want to angle when you're looking for it, almost think at like a 45 degree angle towards the MB. That's usually, if they're coming in at these really steep angles like that, that's usually where it's gonna go in. So once again, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much. These are both, the reason I did these videos and the reason I hit record on this is because it was a molar and I was super excited that there was this cool MB2 so I could talk about kind of curves and teeth. Please drop a comment below if you have anything else you'd like to see. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you next time.